Well, good afternoon. I'm Linda Levy, the president of the Fragrance Foundation in the United States of America. I am so excited to be on Washington Street today to visit the boutique of Parfum de Marly. Um, Yvonne was so charming and asked me many months ago, and today I finally have my premiere visit. So Yvonne, thank Hello, you so Linda. much for thank having you me. So much. Thank Even you a so kiss much. this time. <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> thank you so much for making it and visiting us. It's such an honor. And I have to say we are uh, part of the Fragrant Foundation since almost two years now. Yes, and I have thank to thank you. you for welcoming Perfumes de Marly in your organization. We are thrilled and honored, and thank you for being there. Well, you're a very valuable member, and I'm thrilled to be here. Everyone said it was beautiful, but I think they even underrated that. So why don't we just walk around to a spot, because we have a couple of special guests we want to greet. I think we're going this way, actually. It's absolutely magnificent, the display of all the fragrances. How many fragrances are there? We have almost 30 in the scent now. 30. That's and, good. Uh, yeah, and the boutique is uh, an, an homage to the Versailles Chateau and perfumes of Mar and uh, Chateau de Marly Castle. I see and the view. So you have the uh, on the floor you have uh, the Versailles parquet. You have a very Osmanian style on the on the walls, and it's really a, a bridge between the 18th century, the Marly Castle Versailles, and the modern. Uh, life we are Yes, a big contrast between the castle and Washington Street, I must say. Before we get into the major conversation, which I'm dying to ask you so many questions, Yvonne, we have two fantastic guests, ladies that I've met before, but if we're thrilled you could come on this hot day in New York City. We have Pia, please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Pia Velasco and I'm with InStyle. And the one and only Dina. Hi everyone, I'm Dina Campbell, I'm with Marie Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. Why don't we step around and we can talk about the fragrances sure. now. I'll follow you. Thank you. So before we get into some of the fabulous fragrances, I do love the history. Mm -hmm. I do love the fact that we have an actual view here. So tell us a little about when Parfum de Marly started. When was it born? And how did you get to this moment? So Parfum de Marly was created by Julien Sprecher and was live in 2009. So it's, it's uh, quite short of a time. It's yes. been uh, almost 12 years, yes. if I'm counting well. Yes. And uh, I have to say that uh, in 12 years, the brand has taken a, a, a big uh, aura and uh, grow worldwide in every continent. And it has been a blessing for me to be part of this adventure from day one. Wow. So Julien Sprecher, um, created uh, the brand and is someone very passionate with the history, with, uh, of course, perfume, because he grew up near, his father used to be a distributor of many famous brands like Guerlain, Armani in the 80s. So Julien grew up surrounded by many perfumes and the objects were kind of uh, uh, important because his father didn't want him to touch them. And of course, as a kid, mm -hmm. he just wanted to, yeah, to, yeah. to gravitate around them and was a real fan of the perfume in general and its powers and wanted to naturally to create his own brand. Being a fan of the history uh, around the one specific era, which is during the 18th century, mm -hmm. when Louis XV, King of France, absolutely revolutionized the perfume world. We consider this period as the beginning of the modern perfumery as we know it today. Uh -huh. There is a before and an after. From that time only, people started to wear perfume as today, as an object of seduction, of fashion, of trend. Before that, there were perfume, but the hygiene was so terrible right. that Louis XIV, for example, was known to take one bath in his life. Yes. Not because he did. Thank goodness for perfume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he was using very strong perfume to cover bad odors more than. So there were no refinement before. But from the 18th century, and here you can admire the Marley Castle back in time. Uh, from the 18th century, with the improvement of the engineering and the started to treat water, so it was the very beginning of the refined perfumery in France. From that time only, all European courts started to order their perfume in France, in Paris. 
If today the made in France is so important, it's thanks to Louis XV. So uh, Julien wanted to pay tribute to this very important, it's kind of the new beginning of the perfume world. And um, that is why uh, we will use a, a large majority of natural essence. Okay, I'm going to interrupt for a minute yes. because the history is very important to know how we got here today. Let's talk about the overall collection. Mm -hmm. And at the Fragrance Foundation, we always talk about this. There are still specific fragrances that are created for women, mm -hmm. specific fragrances created for men, and then what we call universal, or you may refer mm -hmm. to as unisex, that everyone wears. And um, some of the pink ones are my real favorites, so we're going to talk about the overall, and then we're going to get back to those faves. Mm -hmm. But give us a feeling. There, repeat, if you would, I know you were saying it. How many total, total fragrances, fragrances are, are in the collection? collection? Around 30. Around 30. So 29 or And if you just were to not go through every single one, but sort of refer to what's lined up here, starting with, of course, women. We must go first. Mm -hmm. um, what, what is the, the basic, basic collection? collection? So actually, you have two collections. You have yes. a man unisex, which will be those uh, bottles, which are initially, we started only with this collection. Mm -hmm. It was unisex. We don't believe necessarily in gender in perfumes. There is no gender. You I will make them feminine. Yes. I will make them masculine. And, but at a point of time, Julien Sprecher was feeling frustrated as a man not to create perfume dedicated to women. And uh, it, it, he has, you know, when you create for uh, unisex, it's more a technical approach because you don't really picture who is going to wear it. It will be men, women. So it's more a technical where you will work on a certain olfactive family. Yeah. When he projects himself, when he's creating for women, he has a real emotional co uh, connection. Mm -hmm. And today he prefers from far to create for women than unisex. Okay, yeah. so this collection, which we're going to get back to again with the Delina. All of these beautiful uh, bottles mm -hmm. are specifically for women. Yes. Yes. And then? And then the, you have uh, the... I'm going to hold one of these. What are these? They look different to me. Yeah, they look different because this is a collection uh, where we play with, with unusual ingredients, which will be a bit more niche or complex, uh, not necessarily for everyone, test, and where we'll play with unusual ingredients that will surprise people, but it always... sounds a little audacious, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> hey, Pia actually had a question about mm -hmm. the audacious. It's one of my favorite words that you've been using. Yes, and that's exactly my question. The word audacious and audacity is used over and over again mm -hmm. in the marketing for this brand. Yeah. Why is that, and how would you define audacious? But, you know, the, the freedom of working and creating for a niche house like Perfumes of Mali, uh, the, it's really, the difference is really the freedom. We create for, our aim is few thousands of people to fall in love with one creation. Mm -hmm. We don't aim to sell million to millions of people. So it gives us a lot of freedom towards the creativity. We will never run any tests or with customers or to be sure that yes, it's well accepted. No, Julien and the team will go with their guts, with their belief, and uh, go completely free towards the collection. So the, to be audacious and modern is something uh, I believe that picture very well the brand. It sounds like audacious is like outrageous in terms of creativity. Mm. That's a really interesting question. I'll give, you, I'll give you, if you allow me. I allow you a, anything in your A routine. quick example is, yes. is uh, Calan, and uh, you will experience it after. Calan is a fabulous creation, I believe piece of art, and the opening is a bit rough. Of course, we knew before to launch it that the black paper is maybe a bit strong at first, so we tried to tune it down to make it more accessible, but then we were losing the magic in the dry down. Mm -hmm. So we came back and didn't touch it and launch it as it is, because that's the freedom of a niche brand. So that's a perfect example of to be audacious towards our creation. I must also say these bottles, ladies, and I'm sure you would agree, are absolutely magnificent. And before we even get to start smelling some new ones today, I mean, they are absolutely beautiful. And even though we admire beauty and we are in a very luxurious business, sometimes um, 
we have to take another look at how we are and really realize in the world that we are in today, uh, I think sustainability is something. So Dina was even talking to me, and I think Pia about that before. Did you have any questions about that sustainability piece to the fabulous line? Okay, we'll be back to you, Dina. Hit it, Pia. Well, it's a two-part question. You know, we have a climate crisis upon us, and we all have to do our part for it. So the first part question is, what do you think that the Fragus industry as a whole can do? And then I'm curious, because I know Parfum de Marly has wonderful sustainability efforts, if you could walk us through those. Before you tell your specific, I do need to say, mm -hmm. no matter how much we're in this luxury category and how much we love doing everything, it's a journey. We're at the beginning of a journey. You can't just like flip the switch and say, wow, everything's recyclable and whatever. And mm -hmm. perhaps the past few years in particular, when we weren't in person, we really realized what's important in life. So I think it's the beginning of a journey for everyone in the foundation, but I know Parfum de Marley is addressing this already. So please tell us what you've been doing. Yeah, but we are actually at the very beginning stage. But as I mentioned you at the beginning, Julien's pressure is uh, loving nature. So as every business, Marley had a negative uh, uh, you say footprint, mm. uh, carbon footprint, because uh, we, we have to put our fragrances in shipping and production and so of course we kind of damage because of this uh, activity. Uh, but uh, Julien Sprecher wanted to act on that. Actually we started the process almost two years ago already. We don't communicate really about it yet because we are at the initial stage and we have a lot to do. But we are currently changing our packaging to recycle uh, packaging, we are, you will have a refill for the body cream, that's a production part. So we are working each and every element for the production to limit our carbon footprint. But on top of that, we, uh, we are working on the reforestation in Brazil, and the aim is for us to reach a minimum uh, say neutral carbon footprint within three years from now. So we already planted around 16,000 trees, but, I, you know, the depressive part, to be really honest with you, it's nothing. So we have to do much more and continue uh, to invest in that. But we are going even further. We are just not planting trees because most of the trees, they cut them because they need land to produce uh, vegetables or whatever they want to. So we have a, a program uh, with an organization where we'll plant the trees and train and develop some plantation that can bloom uh, under the trees. In that case, they won't, be able, they won't be willing to cut them anymore. So we have a vast program, and uh, we are at the initial stage, and yeah. we have still a lot, a lot to do. I think it's a great thing, Yvonne. And a lot of people who are um, very interested in wearing fragrance are a bit hesitant because they think we're so self-indulgent, but mm -hmm. really caring about the planet Earth and really um, respecting the communities that are picking the ingredients is a huge amount of yeah. this. Okay, let's get back to the lineup because uh -huh. I'm too excited not <laughs> to smell some things. So we just sort of met this group. There's a new men's fragrance yes. that we met just a couple of... Uh, yes, Altan. So yes. just before we, we smell Altan, I'd like to tell you that the great thing in the Perfumes de Mali collection is the yes. variety. Yes. So you will find the beauty of them is they will all adopt something different. Something Emotionally, for everyone. Exactly, something mm -hmm. for everyone and something for every moment in life. So you will have some freshies like Sedley, uh, Greenlee, uh, Galloway, and then you will have where we are the most famous, some mm -hmm. more signature creation like Pegasus or Leighton, and then some really niche creations that stand out that will be most probably not for everyone at first, but the great thing is our Customers will start with one and gravitate and step by step acquire some more because they are all different, which is a very unique. I just want to say that when you said to me the first time we met, what would you 
like to be gifted, or uh, maybe Judy, our friend here, mm -hmm. said, what is your favorite? I said, my most favorite thing to do is to get a discovery set. Uh -huh. Because then, uh, many that you mentioned, you get to go through a process, and you get to try many different things. It's mm -hmm. my most favorite mm -hmm. thing. So I really encourage everyone who's tuned in today, if you're not sure, even though there's so much great info we're going to share, or we're going to, you know, you can always see it on the website, Having that moment to discover, it's the perfect word, and to really see the different scents and to live with them and to have them in your lifestyle, it allows you to go on a journey to figure out what it is. Because you know, Yvonne, I do not believe in a, just a signature scent. Mm -hmm. I believe in a collection. Absolutely. So I appreciate that you're explaining that there is a different one for uh, the summer or the winter or the romantic mm -hmm. evening or that you're having a million friends over or whatever the occasion mm -hmm. may be. Yeah. So there's a whole citrus crowd, I think, over there. Yeah, there is. And the, 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 the great thing is there is really something for everyone. And in their styles, all of them will have a, a amazing impact, projection, and lasting power, which is very difficult to do with freshes. Yes. The more fragile is the creation, the more complicated it is to make it last. And they are the one who spend the many years to, to get to that point. Uh, and uh, they will always have uh, something plus in the dry down with uh, mm -hmm. elements like sandalwood, like incense, like that. They won't be only freshies, but freshies with personality. Yeah, it's a big part yeah. of today when it's like 90 degrees mm -hmm. out in New York City, so yeah. the fresh works. Yeah. And who was the perfumer on the one you're about to tell us about? Uh, Altan, we work with Expression Parfumé. Mm -hmm which is a, a, a small independent uh, company. Uh, it was the second time we work with them. We, we did work with them with Calan already before. Ah. And uh, they are very talented, not as much as known as uh, someone like Quentin Biche who did Delina, uh, but extremely talented. And they really understood and uh, worked very well with Julien. And uh, you know what? the most important is the connection Julien as evaluator will have with a perfumer. It's a very important and creative process. Yeah, yeah, Audacious, absolutely. as you know. Mm. Uh, so just a Tell word on Altan. So we just launched it a couple of months ago. It's doing extremely well. I love Altan because there is a duality into it. Mm -hmm. At first, it's very fresh. Uh, it's bright. You have natural bergamot. You have clary sage. And then you have a beautiful heart notes with a mm very beautiful bridge with soft leather and praline, which will warm it up. And then a dry down with precious wood and a touch of wood to have the signature. And uh, this is completely unisex. We sell it equally to men and women. It's, uh, it's doing extremely well. I could well. wear this one. Oh, yeah. I could. And uh, the dry down is very, very sensual. OK, I'm reserving my arms for some <laughs> other reasons in a moment. Mm. If you don't mind, I can't believe that I could even wait a few minutes. We must talk about the Delinas. Yes. And Dina is very involved. Uh -huh. She actually had an interesting question about the Delina trio, I think. Yes, so my favorite is Delina. Um, but I've heard that if you mix the original with the latest uh, scent, that it really heightens the fragrance. Can you talk to me a little bit about combining fragrances to strengthen mm -hmm. the scent? Hello. You know, the perfume world is a world of freedom. <laughs> so we have many mm -hmm. customers that love to play around and layer. Sometimes yeah. they can layer even a perfume de Marly with another brand. I believe what matters is you love it. OK? Now, if I want to be completely transparent, I'm not a fan of layering with a work creation. I'll tell you why. Uh, Delina with the Quentin Biche, I think Julien has worked almost three years and I think more than 70 meetings in order to arrive to exactly what Julien had in mind and reach this amazing uh, And show us the three miracle. Delinas if you don't yeah? mind. I've already sprayed one on my arm. So the three, Dina, that mm -hmm. we need to... Now this is my fave, if I may just say. Okay, we, we yes, ever, of course. There are favorites. This one is La Rosé. La Rosé, Delina La Rosé. So this is La Rosé. And which one is your favorite, Dina? I think the original. The original. Mm -hmm. yeah. OK. And then you have the Delina exclusive. But you see, when you work mm -hmm. I so can't hard 
for such a long, you know, to have the perfect fragrance, it's all about detail and tuning and you, you try so many uh, possibilities. You know, creating the perfect fragrance, it's like winning a lottery. It's extremely complicated to achieve. So the chance when you layer with something else on top that you have the perfect balance is almost impossible. Saying that, we don't care. It's a world of freedom. As, as soon as you love it, and that's true that when you layer, you are sure to wear something that nobody has. So that, I believe that's what people like. So it's a world of freedom. Go for it if you like it. So I'm going to stay with La Rose for a while. You're going to stay with the original. What is the third Delina in this pink trio? And then you know, La Rose is your favorite. Yes. For me, it's my second favorite. Oh, I have another arm then. <laughs> my favorite is yes. Delina Exclusive. And Delina Exclusive is, a, first of all, it's a perfume extract. So you have over 30% of natural essence. Uh, so it will last over 12 hours on any skin, and it's, uh, I believe, the most sensual creation we ever did. It's, I'm addicted to it, so it's very personal. You can disagree with me, of course, but it's more vanilla, almost a bit powdery, and it's so sensual. So that's the perfect fragrance for evening, date, winter, when you want to, to be uh, surrounded by a very warm creation and this Can we is... go over there a minute to Dina? She gets to mm -hmm. smell my two arms now. Let's have a moment. This was my original fave, La Rose. Hey, beautiful. And La Rose. This is your arm, arm, I think. That's me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you guess what? This is what's the greatest thing about fragrance. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm staying with La Rose. I'm I have a great loyalty issue, but besides that, this is what I think is me. But the other mm -hmm. thing that often happens is in the world of fragrance, you think this is what you like. And once in a while, I really encourage people in the audience. People, I am like you know, a little girl in a candy store and I get so mm -hmm. many fragrances. And I don't go with what I natu naturally think is my fave and I wind up being introduced to something else. Mm -hmm. Like you just did yeah. this to me. Mm -hmm. And I, it starts to become like something that grows on me. And so, scissor oil, it's like you ooh. applied. So can yeah, you feel, yeah, 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 yeah. feel it? We it's like you apply your body oil, actually. It, it is true. And it's, that's why it, it won't evaporate, because it's not alcohol-based, uh, and it will last forever, and it's so subtle, it's beautiful. So, so I don't know if the people in the audience can see, but I'm actually sparkling on the right arm mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. But this is going to lead to something else, I think, in a moment. Mm -hmm. My point is, we have our faves, Dina, but once in a while, we have to like step out and say, I just want to wear something else today and see if it's something that I will want to take into my future collection, mm -hmm. if I may say that, yeah. even though you're from and, and you know what mm -hmm. taste evolve in time. It's like wine. When the first time you drink wine, it's like awful for everyone. And then at the end of the day, we end up liking wine too much. Uh -huh. uh, it's the same with fragrance. So naturally, people will go towards freshies or vanilla, easy. Uh, is the scent in a way that we are familiar with, all of us. But, uh, of course, then we evolve. The more you smell, the more you discover. It's an acquired then, taste. Uh, so many times I have customers tell me, oh, I don't like rose. Yeah. And they end up with Delina. So, because it depends how it's surrounded, how it is made. And uh, we don't really know what we like. We know what eventually what we dislike. You know, the, this is true. The scent, uh, the scent is the only of our senses linked to the subconscious. So it's difficult to say some, to tell someone, oh, you don't like that. But no, it's good. You should like. No, you can't do that. If they don't like, they don't like. It's fine. But it doesn't mean they won't like it very much in five years from now. Yeah, I also think <clears throat> we all had a collection before we started um, this lockdown pandemic, whatever. And people more and more are realizing, besides seduction, which still is on the top of the list, mm -hmm. um, fragrances really transform you to another place or a time or vacation or something within your life. So I think it's enhancing people's lives at a level that is much more serious than it used to be. Yeah, I truly believe it's a life game changer and it can have a huge positive impact in our life. Uh, first, I believe the first clue should be you, should, you have to get a connection with a fragrance. Mm -hmm. You have to love it. Mm -hmm. You, not personally. care personally, yeah. no, without.
carrying the brand, the trend, uh, yeah. uh, what people think. Uh, it has to be something you are proud to wear, you feel confident, you feel beautiful or handsome. And that's the number one criteria, whatever the price, whatever the brand. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you do have some creation which will have a huge impact on others, on people surrounding you. So we all love to receive compliments. We all love to be pictured in a dynamic style or mm -hmm. uh, handsome or beautiful or complex. I, I love to wear, personally, fragrance to stand out. Like, people will ask me questions and say, oh, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, so you have so many different reasons to wear fragrance, but it's not so easy to select the one that will have really this positive impact on yourself. And I and, believe that's the key. And even though everyone can't smell us who is watching today, um, we often refer to this as the invisible accessory. Because regardless of what you're wearing, it's a lot also about how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's attainable. I also think it's fun when we have these kinds of chats, Yvonne, to give a little hint of what's coming next. Oh, yeah. So is there anything else in the Delina world that we can look forward to soon? Absolutely, and uh, I have the pleasure to, for the first time, to show you the dry body oil of Let's show it to the Delina. world. So we'll show it now that you, you will be able to try. And really, our customers are waiting for it. It just came to US. It's on the way to our okay. partners. This side of the arm is still ready. Okay. <laughs> and so this is a body An oil, dry body oil, smelling like Delina. It's uh, the feedback I have so far is amazing. I know all our clients love the body cream. I, I receive as many of clients with the people who could try it already. And I'm looking forward. I'm so when does this one come out? It's come out. No. Like right now. Uh, last week we received the stock. It's on its way to the okay. department store. This stores. fragrance is if you're going to that barbecue, or I think uh, Dean is, well, both of the ladies here today, if you're going to go somewhere outside and a little uh, shoulder is showing, this would be like the perfect friend to have exactly. as your invisible accessory. It's absolutely beautiful, and I think I'm sparkling even mm -hmm. more at mm -hmm. this point. You know, new is good, but enhancing, you know, fragrances that you really like together. So I wouldn't say, Dina, it's really about layering, but I would say once you find something that you really like, it's very often in different formulations, you can find different occasions to wear it. Or when we're all going to stay bare-legged as long as we possibly can, this would be magnificent. So, okay, you'll see my shining legs on Washington Street after we leave this. Beautiful and then, thing. so the next launch we'll have of a new scent when will be and where? Valentine's Day. Oh wow! For next February, and it will be actually a creation Julian Sprecher worked with uh, Quentin Biche with the Quentin same. Quentin Biche. Let's talk about him a mm -hmm. little. Yeah. So Quentin Biche is working on many parfums de Marly. Not all. Not but all. But many. He's one of our favorite partner and a great friend. How long did it take for them to develop what's coming for Valentine's Day, let's say? Uh, two years and a half for yeah. this one. So yeah. this is going to be Which is pretty fun. fast. Yeah. <laughs> no, some, as I know, can go on over five years. Yeah. It's not unusual or uncommon. So what will this one be? Do you want to just give us a little hint? Little hint. Uh, one, the bottle will be spectacular. Uh, I, I well, don't know I think if all you, of these are pretty. you know the Delina La Rose with the, the frosted mm -hmm. uh, glass. Yeah. So it will be see-through with white paint inside the bottle. Oh. With a frosted, so it will be absolutely magnificent. And the scent is a, a floral, musky, woody. Uh, and I don't want to reveal too much of it yet. A, that's a good hint, though. But it's absolutely magnificent. I have my uh, VP of sales wearing it every day in the office. We can follow her even <laughs> blind everywhere. The projection is incredible. It's very soft sophisticated, feminine. And I truly believe it will be a spectacular success. Well, it sounds good, but um, it's a long time till Valentine's Day, I'm happy to say. We've got the whole summer to be wearing the body oil. We have a collection with many things in it. And at this point, um, we know that Christmas with Parfum de Marley is going to be great. So besides this magnificent boutique, which 
I could certainly move into. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I have selected my room in the palace right. just in case you invite me over. Mm -hmm. um, are there any questions from the audience that we think we have? Because if not, we'll go back to our fabulous editors. Do P or Dina, do you have anything else? This is a moment in time that we haven't covered that you'd like us to talk about. But I have a question. Sure. What's the best way to really truly make a fragrance long lasting? I feel like sometimes when I spray something, I can't smell it and I'm like, do mm -hmm. other people smell it? How do I really make it last throughout the duration of a day? All right, so it's a, it's a good question and a tricky question. Uh, of course, the way you create fragrance has a big say in it. But it's not only uh, it's challenging, it's actually very easy to create a fragrance and last. If you use strong ingredients like wood, wood, and so on, anyone can make it lasting. It starts to be tricky when you use fragile ingredients and when you want to work on versatility. And the more fragile the ingredient will be, the more challenging it will be to make it last. So we do have some secret, of course, to, uh, and some uh, uh, molecules that will help to enhance the scent of the natural ingredients, like uh, we call them captive ingredients, that are synthetic molecules that will enhance the power of the scent and make them blend it together in a better way. After, of course, you have so many parameters. You have as well the concentration, so between uh, eau de Cologne, uh, eau de toilette, Eau de parfum, parfum, it's more and more concentrated. So usually the more concentrated it is, the longer it will last. But, but I have an interruption. In the more general world, it has a few other things. What the weather is, how humid it is, how it's absorbed into you. And one other thing, if you don't mind, because I just read this from a uh, perfumer I admire very much. Sometimes, Dina, what, you, what most people smell on themselves are the top notes. And as the day goes on, with all frankness, you don't smell yourself anymore. So if Dina put it on and Pia put it on, you would smell it more on the other person than you would smell it on yourself. That so, is very true. You know, there's a very, everything Yvonne said is absolutely without question the intensity and what's going to happen. But the weather, what you're wearing, did you put on lotion before? But this thing about smelling it on yourself, it's a question, Ivan, I interrupt because everyone no, asks and I me this. To, I wanted to say it. Yeah. That's why it's a complicated question. Yeah. Because you will have what we call nose fatigue. Correct. So imagine mm -hmm. you entering in a, in a farm, not with specific smells that you have in a farm. At first you enter, it's like, oh, it doesn't smell good. But after 15 minutes, you don't smell anything anymore. This is nose fatigue. It goes the same with your scent. Uh, actually, to, to wear a perfume that you will smell after a few hours, that would bother you. What matters is when you walk, you have a sillage. And that's the magic of Delina, for example. It's not overly powerful, but the projection is insane, and you receive 10 compliments a day. So it's all about tuning. And after, it's not. As simple as that, even what I say, that yeah. the more concentrated it is, the more it will last. It's not true as well. It's true, but the challenge is most of the time, the more concentrated it is, the more the base notes will come up. Then you will unbalance your scent, and it will end up crushing, crushing the opening. So the, it's all about fine tuning. You have so many parameters. But well, that's, that's what I can tell you. It's a good one. I think we're about to conclude, if I'm um, reading the vibe right, but I have to mention also, because this is the most beautiful boutique. It's been here, I think, for several years. It took me too long to get here. Ivan, you were so charming and asked me the very first day. But one other thing, because I really pushed everyone today, you know, the Fragrance Foundation thinks an Instagram Live like this is much more interesting to meet the person who really is the expert on the brand, to be in the home of the brand. This is only our second Instagram ever. And another thing is I believe the Parfum de Marly has set up a little promotion so that if anyone right now um, were to make their purchase on this very special day or maybe a couple of days, I think a shower gel will be is a body lotion. Yeah, we'll have a special gift. Little. And you can have already the body oil on the... Oh, online. Online. Oh, just oh wow, so we don't just, have to wait. Just from today. Okay. You have and to wait if you want to go in a... Never no. mind Marcus Sachs or I Nordstrom, think, but... 
I say stay home, take a great mm -hmm. shower, and put that body oil on. So, yeah. Yvonne, Thank this was so magnificent, much, and you. Dina and Pia, Thank you, ladies. magnificent to be here. And we're all going home smelling a little and better than we did. Thank you, everyone, for, for tuning in. Thank and, you so uh, we much. We hope you had as good time as we had, and uh, wish you the best for the coming months. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of the summer because it's a beautiful time of the year to be wearing a lot of fragrance. Bye, everyone. Bye.